Hopefully everybody can see my screen okay. It looks okay on my end, but feel free to let me know in the chat if it's not. Um, so good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. It's morning here. Uh, so on my end, it's 9 920. Um, I'm excited to be here with all of you today. My name is Katie. I am a former special education teacher turned technology coordinator. I live in New Jersey, and I'm really excited to share this kind of quick dive into micro learning with all of you today. Um, the slides are available using the tiny URL here. I'll drop that in the chat at the end as well. Um, if for some reason I forget, feel free to, you know, tweet, uh, send me a message on Twitter or, you know, contact me and I will gladly share that with you as well. Okay. So, ooh, Beijing, nice. <laughs> um, so there are some problems with traditional professional development, which I think we all know at this point, you know, especially now, you know, in the middle of the pandemic still, uh, there's a hard, it's hard to get time for you know traditional professional development training sessions, workshops, and things like that. There's especially a lack of coverage for teachers. I hear from my teachers that they want PD still, but it's really hard for them to get out of the classroom because I mean, I think us as well as everywhere else is kind of having a substitute shortage right now. Um, so it's been kind of difficult for teachers to get professional development, which is why I kind of turned myself toward micro learning so micro learning in a sense is short bursts of information frequently um, that teachers can do at their own pace. So I kind of started on this journey during my Google Innovator project, uh, which is called Assembling Inclusion, and it's a platform of micro learning courses based on special education related topics. Uh, but it kind of branched over into my current role as a tech coordinator as well, as I wanted to provide training for my teachers who desperately wanted it, but weren't able to get out of the classroom or maybe didn't have the time in their schedule for me to pop in as frequently as they would like. So as a whole, micro learning focuses on one learning objective at a time instead of a traditional PD session, which is an hour encompassing a couple of different objectives. There's just one single target. Um, usually it answers a question or solves a problem. You present the content in a variety of ways and it's accessible across devices. So like the whole point of me creating micro learning PD for my teachers was that I wanted one place for them to go to get all of their ed tech information and resources when they needed it. So whether they were pulling it up on their laptop during class because they needed a quick answer or they're pulling it up on their phone and learning via their phone, I wanted to make sure that they were able to access those resources immediately. So I'm going to go through in the next 15 minutes, uh, 10 strategies that I used to develop micro learning courses uh, with for my staff in my district and for my Google Innovator project. Feel free to drop any questions into the chat as I'm going along. Um, I will gladly answer them for you. <laughs> Uh, just to show you some quick examples of what micro learning looks like in real life, these are some platforms you're probably familiar with. Um, Tasty is my favorite micro learning platform because it's those quick, like minute long videos teaching you how to cook things. That's technically micro learning because it's, you know, short burst of information. Um, Khan Academy, obviously, is uh, micro learning, Duolingo. Uh, so those are some real life popular examples, but I kind of took those characteristics and transformed them into technology based professional development. So the first strategy I want to start with is choosing a single location for your micro courses. So you can have a variety of different platforms to build your courses, but I like to have one single location where all the courses are housed. So for my innovator project, it's all housed on a single website. Same with my district wide PD, it's all housed in a single space. So teachers can bookmark it, save it on their phone, save it on their computer. That way they know where to go to find the newest courses as they're released and they know where to go to get the answers that they need. Um, you could do it wherever feels comfortable for you, whatever works within your district. Um, it could just be a single Google site or a website. You, If you are so inclined to develop an app to house all of your uh, digital tools and micro courses, that's where I'd like to go in the future if I could figure out how to code correctly. Um, it could be as simple as a spreadsheet or even like a wakelet to house all of those links to those micro courses. So the second strategy is to focus on a single learning objective. So you can see this is my Google Classroom training for my teachers. Each of those buttons is a single learning objective, a single target. And I really try to break it up into something small. So I have a whole module dedicated to building rubrics, but one micro course might just be where to find the rubric button. So, you know, breaking it up into small chunks like that is great because the teachers who already know how to do certain things can skip those, you know, 
in, in entry level micro courses or micro lessons, and they could go to the one that they need. So instead of me sending out a 30 minute tutorial about how to build a rubric using Google, uh, using Google Classroom and having them skip through to find the section that they need, they can go to that single learning target and get exactly what they need quickly. I always like to include the why bother uh, with especially professional development. Why is it relevant to me? Why should I learn it? So every time I develop a micro course, I like to have the why bother at the purpose statement. Um, so why am I learning this? How is it going to benefit me? What's the point? How am I going to use this in my job? I like to have it up front so teachers know exactly why this training, this micro course is relevant for them. Okay. So the, once you've decided on your learning target, your platform, and your why bother, um, the next step is to kind of choose a design. And what's really nice about micro learning is that you could really take any design strategy that you want and bring it in. I put in four design strategies that I kind of like to think of when I start designing. Most of my micro courses are built using sites and then linked back to the main website. Um, so each course is its own individual site. So sometimes I'll do need-based, uh, like where teachers can pick based off what they need. So this particular lesson on the left uh, was about co-teaching. So what do you need as a new co-teacher? Not really technology-based, but still, you know, fits within the micro-learning platform. Um, they can click on the individual lesson that fits their needs. You can create one page with all the information and the teachers can kind of just scroll through and find the lessons that pertain to them. You could do interest-based. So I have a, a gamified learning tools micro course, but maybe they only want to learn about um, GimKit right now. So they can click on that micro course and go straight to it. Um, and then you could also do, you know, different sections with text-based content as well. So really the design can take kind of any structure you want. I kind of try to think about what's the most successful for what I'm trying to do. Um, do I want to break it up into mini modules? Do I want to kind of give teachers the freedom to explore different interests? And I build from there. I do like to include a pre-assessment as part of the micro course as well, especially for something that may be a little bit more content heavy, like how to use a specific tool. Um, this one happens to be about dyslexia because October was, um, National Dyslexia Awareness Month. So we built one for that. Uh, so what I like about the pre-assessment is that I just use a simple Google form. Uh, and what I do is I have the teachers, if they want to, take that pre-assessment before they start the micro course. And it pinpoints for them using the quiz self-check feature what lesson they should really focus on. So for this example, the teacher got a question wrong about you know myths versus reality of, micro course, of uh, dyslexia. And it links right away to the lesson within the micro course so they can go and explore and, you know, kind of figure out why they got that answer incorrect. Same thing with EdTech PD. Um, so maybe you have a question about how to use a specific tool or, you know, strategies for doing something with a specific tech tool. And you can build, you know, a Google form quiz and then link the, the uh, module based on the question that got incorrect so they could review it. So really the, the heart of micro learning is the content itself. And the whole point of, of micro learning is to vary your content. So not just presenting like a video, but offering options for teachers to absorb the content that you're providing them. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple of different content-based options that I've used in my micro course development. So the first strategy I always use is pairing video with the step-by-step -step document, which I know a lot of tech coaches are already doing. Um, yes, it is amazing to have all those, you know, those multiple ways to access the content for accessibility too. Um, I personally, which is super bad considering, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm only 28 years old. Um, I'm not a video person. Like if I'm going to watch a tutorial, I want to go step-by-step. Step. I, I'm not a video person. So when somebody offers me a different option besides a video, I'm like, oh yes, I can do something else besides watch a long video. Um, so I always try to pair, you know, my content with a couple different options. So you could pair a video with the text-based directions with screenshots or GIFs or you know whatever you'd like to do to kind of offer a variety for how to learn to do something specific. Um, you could go the narrative route, which is really big in micro learning at more of the corporate level, um, where they give you scenarios and you're kind of you know clicking through. I did this with a Google slide presentation. Um, I you know created a narrative like, oh, you are a co-teacher designing a blended learning station rotation model. What's the first thing you and your co-teacher want to do? And it kind of becomes like a, a choose your own path um, using Google uh, slides. 
but it's more of a narrative based thing. So you're working through and it's like, okay, you're in this scenario. What are you going to do next? Um, you could also do simulations. I always advocate, especially with the tech uh, tutorials for using IRAD as a platform. I love it. Um, it's so easy. And for my teachers who are maybe hesitant to watch a video and then try it on their own account, it's like a, it's like a no fail way to click through a technology process. There's no fear of clicking on the wrong thing, of messing anything up. So my teachers who may be more hesitant to click and try things, I'm like, do this tutorial. You know, it's, it's just a tutorial with screenshots and I'll tell you where to click, where left click, right click, where to type different things. Um, that way they're getting the practice for trying something out, but they're not a afraid um, to do it on their own account. So like we were, I was training teachers on uh, modifying assessments using Linkit and they were afraid of messing up the original copy of the assessment. So I'm like, okay, let me create, you know, an IRAD tutorial. You can click through it and then it's not even the real platform. So if you mess up, oh, well, like it's not a huge deal. Um, flip cards are also great for micro learning, uh, especially if you're doing anything with terms, categories, definitions. Um, I do that with Google Slides as well, and I just embed it. Um, and it allows the person to click on the card and it'll flip it over animation style to kind of go over different elements of you know definitions or categories. Um, I also try to make sure that my micro courses have resources embedded. I always try to embed that link to make a copy automatically. Um, so this is an SEL and Google tools uh, resource that I created. Uh, it's on my assembly and inclusion platform and I also made it available to my teachers. So like I talk about the emotional reflection, uh, the emotional wheel where, where students can drag over how they're feeling that day. Um, but when teachers click on the link, they're prompted to make a copy. So I always like to have you know, that element of, yes, I'm showing you how to do something, but also if you want it, here it is to take right here within the platform. So we're learning it, you have different ways to access the content, um, but then also you can take a copy as well. Um, despite the fact that micro learning is asynchronous, I know we're not, we're probably sick of hearing asynchronous at this point, um, but I do like to embed collaboration too. So I'll have teachers kind of reflect, brainstorm how they could use something within um, the module, within the micro course. And then they can kind of look at what other teachers have said before them. If they wanna revisit it one day and see what other teachers have added, they can. Um, this was how to create a drag and drop activity for students, um, mostly for my elementary students, uh, elementary staff, I should say, uh, using Google Slides. So at the conclusion, I had the teachers, you know, this is just a Padlet, but you could use anything, you could use Jamboard or whatever you feel like using. I had them brainstorm, you know, what are some ways you could use the drag and drop lessons that you learned? We went our way through the modules, the micro courses based on how to create it. Now, what can you do with it? Um, I've also had, you know, um, collaborative wakelets where teachers can share something they created. Um, so if they're creating like a self-paced activity based on the, you know, ed tech micro course they took, then they can actually link that resource that they created and share it with all the other teachers who have taken the course as well. So I really like to have that collaborative element, even though, you know, micro learning by default is, you know, self-paced on your own, just in time learning. Um, but I still like to have that element of human collaboration, even if you're not talking face to face. Um, I also like to include an opportunity for self-reflection. That's my ninth strategy. <laughs> um, whether you are just, you know, having them record a video discussing something they learned, um, creating and sharing something, as I had just mentioned. I like to have, if your school is big on social media, you could have them tweet their reflection. Um, there is that tool, I'm forgetting the name right now, it escapes me, that allows you to just click on it and it automatically creates the tweet within your Twitter account and then they could just fill in what they learned. So it's a nice, easy way to have teachers reflect on something they learned. Um, or even, again, just some kind of collaborative, you know, Jamboard element where they can share something that they learned and reflect. Because that's very important for micro learning, reflect on what you just learned. Um, and then the last strategy I have is I always like to include the PD certificate. Um, we're not, New Jersey isn't super heavy on like getting accredited PD for, you know, proof of their hours. Um, so I just, you know, provide a PD certificate where they fill in the form with their name, how long it took them as well. And I found that the teachers are pretty honest with how long the micro course took them. 
Um, sometimes I'll have them check off in the Google form which which lessons they completed because not every teacher has to complete every lesson. Um, so I'll have them check off, you know, maybe they only did one lesson and it took them, you know, three minutes. Maybe they took five lessons and it took them an hour. Um, but they're, they get a, you know, personalized PE certificate. And if you're interested in the gamified element as well, I do push out um, badges for teachers who may be interested in showing off. That's something I want to explore more in the future, but showing off what they took, what they learned, um, providing that element as well. And what's really nice about the micro learning for PD, and this is kind of where I'm heading with it right now, is that it's a great way to introduce the technology. Like this is the tool we're going to be going over in our PD session. Take these course, these little mini micro courses about different elements of the platform. And then when we do have the opportunity to be in person together, the time can be spent not you know, navigating the logistics of the platform and how to do things, but then how to implement it instead. So it becomes more of an authentic in-person PD because we spent the time independently in the micro courses going over more of the logistics and the functions. Okay, so <laughs> I have about two minutes left. So I figured I would share, um, this is a Jamboard that I created where you can kind of share your ideas. Um, if you have a specific, I'll drop it into the chat. Um, if you have a specific, you know, idea for an ed tech micro course that you could create, you can grab a sticky note and drop that in or other micro courses. Um, it doesn't have to just be technology related professional development. Like I said, I had created some that were special education topic focused, um, but it really lends itself well to more of a surface level uh, discussion about technology or instructional uh, procedures. And then in person, you can kind of go in and do the deeper dive and really discuss implementation and integration of these tools and strategies. Um, OK, so feel free to drop anything in there that you find, any ideas you have, or any other just ideas in general. Um, I, I think it's been really helpful for my teachers, but I welcome any questions that you have with the last minute or so. <laughs> I went quickly. I apologize. It was a quick session. <laughs> Well, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything. I, I know this is a very quick. I could do a lot deeper of a dive into, you know, how I build the courses and things like that. But I figured I'd just drop in the 10 strategies that I've been using and hopefully something will be helpful. I'll put the uh, URL back up here for the slides in case you want them as well. Here are the slides. Let me know if that, does, that URL does not work, though. Hopefully it should. Thanks so much, Katie. Um, that was a fantastic session. Learned so much, and I definitely will probably go through that again. Um, the next session will actually be at 7 a.m. PS time. So um, that will be with Minchul Shin, uh, who's from uh, Southeast Asia 19. And the session will be the miracle of Google Sites during COVID-19. And um, I've just posted the link there. So thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm going to just stop the recording.